The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and tell, make sure you go to our home page and check out our more videos. Thank you. We have to reposition the church so we can make maximum impact in the nation. There is no time to waste. We came on this planet just to live once. Yeah, but before we live, we need to leave behind a better world. So we are praying that God will grant us the needed grace that all of us together we will reposition the church for maximum impact in the nation. My message for this evening and next week is repositioning ourselves for maximum impact in our world. Now repositioning ourselves for maximum impact in our world, in your sphere. That the Christian faith rests on two key beliefs. Two key beliefs. One is at the beginning of the Jesus story and the second at the end of the story. The belief at the beginning is the incarnation that God has become man. That God becoming, God incarnating in Jesus. So God becoming man because it is only God who could save mankind. So all have sinned. And I've come short of the glory of God. For salvation to come to us. We needed a savior outside the human race. We also needed someone who could identify with us and bear our sin. So God became man. This is a belief that we hold dearly. The second belief. It's at the end of the story, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. These two events distinguishes Christianity from all other religions. And we need to celebrate this event. We need to celebrate this event. It is these two events that accredit Jesus as the savior of the world. For us, he is not a founder of the Christian religion. Jesus is the savior of the world. These two events that God became man, that Jesus died and resurrected, distinguishes him and make him the one one who saves the world. Now, this is the gospel that purchased our freedom. You see, there's only one thing that you can do to set a slave free. To just set a slave free. Buy him. Yes, sir. Then you set the slave free. And Jesus did just that. He redeemed us by his blood. 
20 verse 28 as 20 verse 28 keep watch over yourself and all the flock of which the holy spirit has made you overseers be shepherds of the church of god which he bought with his own blood the church of God which he redeemed he bought us by his own blood so this is the Christian faith it is a relationship between God and his children. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. The son became a slave so that slaves will become sons. So we have been adopted as children of God. Because of our faith in the finished work on the cross. Let me say again that Christianity... It's a father-son relationship. It is a transforming relationship. And we don't have to reduce it into superstition and calendar. Because Yes, yeah, superstition. It is, it is faith in nothing. It doesn't have any basis. So we have been adopted as children of God. Just by our faith in Jesus Christ. See, adoption in Paul's days was not the act or process of establishing a legal relationship between a child and a parent who is not the biological parent of the child. But having your own child becoming a son. Now, it is like an initiation. The child is around 17 years, 18 years, and now you, 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 the child becomes a son. You deem the child as grown and mature to be able to be your heir. That is what it means in Paul's days when we say you have been adopted. That is great. The adoption in the New Testament, therefore, for, a, to, for the believer into the household of God, in the context of salvation means putting believers in the position of sons. Because before the privileges and responsibilities of that position. Now, so we have become God's children. And we are sons. We are supposed to be mature children. And we have privileges. And there are responsibilities too. Because we have become children of God. Success is basic for all of us. You see, sometimes we have to I'll be talking about rearranging our minds. Because we are children of God. So who are you? Child of the living God. Yeah. There are some times when I'm disturbed and I just don't want to be disturbed. I'll go and look at my face in the mirror. And I tell the 
the person, the image I'm seeing in the mirror that you are a child of God. If as a child of God. There are so many of us who wish to have been born by a certain man. Certain man who would die. But when you are be made a child of God, what does that mean to you? In respect to poverty and lack, the God who made the heavens and the earth. What does it mean to you when we say you are His? Child. It means success basic for all of us. We have direct access to God the Father. All that he we he has is ours. I was saying this morning somewhere. One of uh, the songs that I like. Hey, is this song we we used to sing it and i don't know whether it is so uh it is still relevant it's only that people don't sing it uh also from Marco here and they don't sing it but jesus oh yeah jesus oh yeah Madinina, ni ami wonyina, eye ni di, ni ono so wo, ni nina eye mi di, ni ami wonyina, eye ni di, ni ono so wo, ni nina eye mi di. You know why I like this song? Because this song is saying that all that I have, I have, belongs to the Lord. And what the Lord has is mine. That is why I like this song. Because me, what do I have? <laughs> that one is not nice. The second one, so Everything he has are mine. Maybe I should have finished preaching with this song. Let's <laughs> just okay. change our minds. When we are talking about the fact that you are a child of God. I mean, you don't even have to be thinking about demons. We are talking about created in the image of God. All he has is ours. Because we have become heir of his kingdom. You see, our abilities may differ. But success is for all. Our abilities may differ. But success is for all. What we need to do is to work at what the King James Version calls good success. Making our ways prosperous. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. And this time I will take this from the old King James Version. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then... Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Ma emran umano in free when noon. Now, Jenna, who are we any anajo? Now, what share I in? Said ye, what children know? A woman, 
na eno ena wakwa imbe ye jojo eno ena ebe si uye so for us success is basic enti wa ye ye mfemo diye se besi ye ye but for us to have what King James describes as good success God introduced to all of us is the book of the law it has his mind he says that study it observe it do it meditate upon it then he says that then you yourself will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so success is basic but we want to have good success how do we achieve good success as christians how do we make maximum impact as christians in our world in the light of the topic i'm dealing with repositioning ourselves for maximum impact in our world three things i will suggest number one reposition your mind reposition your mind number two reposition your heart Reposition your hands. Number three. Reposition your hands. Reposition your hands. I'll take the first one today. Reposition your mind. You see, the transforming relationship between Jesus and his sons. Begins with the renewal of mind. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The Bible says the old is gone. The new has come. If anyone is in Christ, that fellow is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. So renew the mind. Accept the scripture. That you are in Christ. You are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. You see, what we have been introduced to observe is not what people say. It is the scriptures. We need to renew our minds. So that the transforming relationship will have effect in our lives too. We have to grow up as Christians. And not reduce Christianity to superstition and calendar. Because we are no longer slaves. We are sons of the living God. And we need to reposition our mind on this. Galatians chapter 4. From verse 1 to 3. Galatians 4 from the NIV 1 to 3. What I'm saying is that as long as an heir is underage, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Now the heir is a child. It is on he is underage. And the Bible says there is no difference between this and the age uh, and the slave. Because slaves are supposed to live by observation. Do this, do that, do that. But once the heir is also under age, he will also be subjected to do this, sit down, stand up, go up. Even though the whole estate is his, he will still be... be, 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 be Commanded about by even the slave. Nanso so did you for no no men in our one dear now so I have a fra or trend the one you said the way aqua now verse 2 says that the air is subject to guidance and trustees until this time set for his 
by his father. A chos em ne say nem mum or wo a yen four any a few four no as said you could see da a jano a share a dear. So we also when we were underage we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. Sir ye tie arano no ye ye and kokuano wa di yang a yen kwa edi say we are say infiti as a dear so we also when we were underage, when we were underage, now listen, once you are born again, you come of age. Okay. Let's go to the next verse and I'll come back to three. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. To redeem those under the law. That we might receive sonship straight away. Because you are his son. God sent the the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba Father. So you are no longer a slave. But God's child. And since you are his child. God has made you an heir. And so when we are born again, and we have been made son. We are not underage. But he is saying that some time ago, when we did not know God, or when God has not brought us into sonship, and we were slaves in the world, we were under some superstition. We were under some elemental forces. But now that we have come of age, we must change our minds and grow. So we don't reduce Christianity into superstition. See, so we don't have to reduce it into Talking handkerchiefs and talking. And say say you make Christo sum aye to say no me bia you to me di and say sum ana ye ni hunu ana say no ma you to me a de a boy embrace bia you kru kru. Now this thing should not have authority over us. Tan no ma we and say say inya ye su to me. We shouldn't reduce Christianity to anointing oils. And say say you make Christo sum a de ni bribe to say anointing oil ana imo to water. To rings. Now to days. to months. To years. Now If you don't take in somebody sings a song like I feel you, I feel, I feel. Then it, it is giving you some impression that for you there are certain special years for you. So one she ye na a man for two jumbi na one jumunumun a kwakwa yeti say, Oh, this is your year, this is your year. Na why do you want you penache say a fibi odi ye? So many went to church yesterday night hoping that twenty twenty three will be the year here. In Tinipa Bibri wa kwa sorry and ra na won yina ni wash your kwine say a fear ya same we a be one fe. But listen Christianity. And so I don't know munti Christmas. It's a relationship between God and his children. Eh, you uncle fair do nyanko pon in a mantem. It is like this. Say net ye. If he was our father last year, say na o ye yeja a fear tre munua. How will he abandon us in twenty twenty? A be ye day na fear ya same we weja yo. You tell me. Wa catch me. Um, God, are you going to leave us in 2020? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm asking you, God. Will he leave us? So that we don't have to reduce Christianity into like special years, special days for you. But don't worry about that. As long as God is concerned. He's never going to leave us. And says he, "Ema Christo, some no ayer to say, and nasrunkubi ana af enfiasrunkubi she say uradi wo wey 
Don't let us reduce it into tokens, oils. I'm sure last night in some churches, people will be moving up and down. Pastor's eyes will be red and just throwing oil, and people are just tapping it so that uh, by, by, by the droppings, he sees that he is blessed. Oh God. Me jiri se enu anajo ye wura fufu fro ni muno eni enwo srawo do enya semketoa na na nipa bebre nso di mrika me jiri se na wo pese anye bia ngu bi kakra enso wonso no wo se ha he said you nyame See Christianity is a transforming relationship. Kristo sumo we e ye but if you understand it, then let me tell you that the best years are still ahead of you. It grows from glory to glory. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. So don't let's resettle on superstition. We are sons, we are not slaves. Superstition is a bluff. It's misleading. It is a deliberate deception intended to create some impression. Now, normally superstition is based on fear. The fear of the unknown. Two things about superstition. Number one, they are feeble. They can't do anything. Superstition cannot do anything. Number two, superstition is beggarly. Ah, that is a wonderful interpretation. Always demanding you do something for it. Until it makes you a slave of it. Let this pastor ask you to buy yellow candle this January. You'll be sure that by June you will buy the black one, the black candle. Because okay, so you go for the red one. Superstition is beggarly. See, the stars do not determine your destiny. Oils will not solve your problem. All you need to grow as a child of God. All you need to do as a child of God, as you say, is to grow up. Set yourself free from the slavish mentality. Don't look at things around you and be panicky. Look into the word of God and gain confidence in God. In Luke chapter 15, there was a story about two sons. The prodigal one is quite popular. He was is the most popular of the two. Now for him, whilst the father was still alive, he forced the father for his portion of his inheritance. So he took what belongs to him, he went to a far place and squandered it. Later on, he came pleading that he should be made a slave. The father threw a party for him. Around that time, the big brother was not around. He was outside the house. And he, when he was coming in, he heard some noise. So the slaves in the house reported to him that it's a celebration. Your, your brother has come back. And your dad is, in, is, is, is happy. So he's thrown a party for him. Then this older son will not come home. 
Because he was angry and very much disappointed. Let's go to Luke chapter 15. Are we together? We need to reposition our mind. From verse 28. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. And so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. And so, when two womra da, nan so, one mammy, a great little baby, and poor, some men named now for four, and Fanquaji and it da. Now, listening to him, a fate here, all these years, and Frisia, do do a masum we, I, me, have been slaving for you. Masum was a qua. So, in his mind, what does, who is he? To one of you, mono, or sum neja sa qua. I have been slaving for you. My year, Juma sa qua mawa. Verse 30. Yeah, but when the, when the son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitute, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Now let's listen to the father. Let's listen to him. Verse 31. My son. Now not my slave. Hey. The father said, hey. You are always with me. Da, uh, and everything I have is yours. Na, ni, ami, wo, ni, na, eh, wo. So there is no need for you to be fuming on kid, small, young goat. See, the man says that everything I have is yours. And then this son who has this slave mentality is saying that you have not killed for me even a young goat. Meanwhile, everything that the man has is his. And in your tiny, your Janu winning in a nedia. Now, so Jina Neja and Nimnani all can say, Oh man, a bridge, Bakumpo. Now, so Neja, you name Sanya winning in a one a Let us reposition our minds. Mama Yan say, I do Know who you are in Christ. We are not slaves. So don't let us move into superstition. Let us emancipate our minds from this slavish mentality. And let us walk 10 feet tall in the house of God. We are not slaves. The father said, my son, you are always with me and all that i have is yours now what the man is saying is is the truth he said this ask for this your brother we had to we had to we had to Let's celebrate his coming home. But all that I have is yours. And it is true. Because so far as the man's estate is concerned, the younger son has taken his share out. And everything that the man has belongs to this senior. That is the fact. We, I pray that God will help us. Let us grow up. Let us grow out of rules and regulations. And walk as children of the living God. See, you cannot do anything about the pressure out there. But grow up. See, you cannot do anything about the demonic world. Okay. But, but grow up. You can't do anything about the harsh economic pressure, but let your business grow up. All it matters is for you to grow up. Out of superstition and slavish mentality. 
and you will know that all things are yours. Matthew 13, 31. Matthew 13, 31. And he told them an another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a master seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a master seed. Which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. This is the mystery of the kingdom of God. God taking small things. Turning them big. So that they become a blessing to other others. It's the smallest of seeds. Yet when it grows, all that you need to do, brothers, is for you to grow. Reposition your mind. Change your slavish mentality. You are a son. You are not a slave. There are certain things about growth. Growth engenders confidence out of experience. It changes outlook on life. Now growth brings maturity. Now growth produces strength. It brings wisdom. So you, it brings it makes you wise. So now you, you leave beggarly things and feeble things behind. Now so growth leaves beggarly things and feeble things behind. Now when you grow, you laugh at superstition. Okay, so did you know any Because you have grown. Since when you never First Corinthians thirteen verse eleven. Mummy and she couldn't to four home. A decay, a tidum and you move to When I was a child, me yabo frano. I talked like a child. Me genesa bofra. I taught like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childhood behavior. I put it behind me. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I taught like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me i want us to put the ways of childhood behind us because by being born again we have become men in the house of god let every day come and meet you doing something about growing up growing up in the christian life growing up in your marital life See, some people are always fighting the old same fight the same situations that brings the fight the same thing they do nothing about it let this year come and meet you growing up in your marital life let every day come and meet you growing up in your business life let every day come meet you growing up in your academic life. Peter says that but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says of Jesus, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God 
and man. I trust him to say yesu onyine e woni paduam adwenim e na onyine wo nyankopon e ni nipa ni To the extent that those who know him when they hear him speak they will say ah is it not Joseph's son? Ah ko si se wo a won shade nim ni ya na wonim no mpo no wo te se wo kasa wo bisa wo say ah enye Joseph ba no ni ya. Where did he get all this wisdom? Eh he en wonya asanya se mudo nyina e free. He is growing up. Wonyini let us grow up. Mo ye nyini Grow and live behind superstition and calendar. Reposition your mind on yourself. Now reposition your mind on your marriage. Reposition your mind on your business. Reposition your mind on your academics. For maximum impact in your world. Grow up. You are a son. And the father is never going to abandon you in 2023. Eternomy 32. Verse 30 and 31. This scripture begins with the word how. So how is to query the method. And to Obisa say better than another chess or Bisa Kwanya Befaswaye. Querying the method. Obisa Kwanya Befaswa. How can one man chase a thousand people? A bear den and when nipa bako a tinipa and pim. Or to put ten thousand to flight. Na nipa me no eti nipa mpimdu. Now he's suggesting that this is the, the, the method will be dif difficult. One man put 10,000 people to fly. Two men chase out 10,000 people. Say how? Then he makes some suggestion. He says that unless they are rock, I sold them. Unless the Lord has given them up. So he's saying that if one person can chase, let's say, thousands of Israelites away, then unless the rock of Israel has sold the Israelites, or the Lord, the rock, has given them up. Unless the Lord has given them up. But the Lord will not give us up. He will not. Verse 31. For their rock. It's not like our rock. If you say one botano on this say one botano. Two rocks. But he's making the difference between the rocks by using capital letter R and small letter R. And more time you know now so we say ba ko edi mu e chain of ofrono. The rock one botano is not like our rock. On this say one botano. I like the last line. Na the two to no many jobs. As even our enemies concede. Na the town from po. Even demons, they are aware. Yeah. And so you have to change your mind. They know that their rock is not like our rock. And even the demons are aware. Yeah. Now reposition your mind. In 2023, you are not a slave. You are a son of the living God. You have direct access to the Father. We are heirs. That is why the spirit speaks within us and cries, Abba, Father to God. How do we achieve good success? How do we achieve good success? 
Reposition your mind. Reposition your heart. Reposition your hands. In 2023 and beyond. And you will see good success. So may the Lord be with us. As we prepare to enter, we have even entered 2023. As we prepare to take the world for God. Your best days are still ahead. This relationship grows better. It doesn't destroy. So watch out for great things. It will not matter the challenges. Unless the Lord gives us up. Otherwise, their rock is not like our rock. And even our enemies can see. Let us just rise up and begin to pray in tongues.